Now I talk about how we can be more effective in evangelism. In order to be effective with evangelism, we have to learn to build up friendship with people. That's the first step. The first step to do evangelism is not just to go out and tell people about Jesus. It's how to build up relationship with people, how to listen to people and respond to their needs and care about them. Because when there is relationship, then there is a chance that the person will trust us and believe in Jesus. If they don't know us, it's very hard for people to believe in Jesus. So that the first skill is how to build a relationship. I find this uh, lacking in many Christians' life. The ability to listen. This is something, you know, the Bible says that be quick to listen. Be slow to speak and slow to be angry. So listen more. Um, and very often when we listen, it's hard for us to hear what the person says. Now, you might say, how come it's hard? Let me explain. For instance, um, one of your family members comes home, and then he or she says, I'm tired. Uh, how would you respond? Or, I'm unhappy today. Uh, my coworker mistreated me, said something unpleasant to me. How do you usually respond? If someone says, or oh, someone says something that hurts me, how do you normally respond? Many people will respond like this. Oh, you don't have to think about him. Don't worry about him. It doesn't matter. What he says doesn't matter. <coughs> Forget about him. So that is teaching. Yeah. It's very natural for us to teach. Whenever someone says there is a problem, we need to learn to listen to the feeling of the person. And when you heard this person says, someone hurts me, what is the feeling of the person? What is the feeling? What would the feeling be if someone hurts you, says something to hurt it's you? It's very painful. Pardon me? It's very painful. Painful, yeah, painful in the heart. So you can say, oh, that's it. Now, painful is a very strong word. If someone says, oh, my coworker today says something unpleasant to me, uh, what can we say? <clears throat> that makes you unhappy, right? When I said that, that makes you unhappy. There are different ways you can say it. When I said, that makes you unhappy, how does it make the person feel? If someone hurts you and then someone says, oh, that makes you unhappy, right? How does that make you feel? Huh? You feel calm. You feel calm. Comforted, okay? Because the person knows your feeling, right? Mm -hmm. Now this is very important. They will respond to the feeling and accept that people have negative feeling. But Christians very often will say, pray, pray. Forget about a person, pray, and you'll be okay. Yeah. That is teaching. So we need to learn not to teach so much. We need to learn to respond to the feeling of people and say, I know it is difficult for you. Uh, if, if it's something very bad, we can say, oh, it's painful. Uh, or we can say, ask him, how do you feel now? How does that make you feel? So we can ask or we can say, oh, that must make you feel unhappy. This is very, very important. Actually, let me ask you. When your family members tell you his troubles, do you have a tendency to teach? Or a tendency to say, oh, that must have made you unhappy. Which way do you naturally respond? Teach, mm. right? Let me ask you, if you feel unhappy and someone teach you, teaches you, how do you feel? More angry. Yeah, more angry. Unhappy, because that person doesn't feel a feeling. 
Right. So this is the first thing we need to learn. To feel the feelings of the person and respond with compassion, with empathy. I know it would feel unhappy. I know it's not easy. You have to, we have to learn this consciously. It's not natural. But when you can respond to people like that, you will have many friends. If you can respond to people saying, oh, I know, you must be unhappy. Or oh, that makes you unhappy. When we respond to people like that, you will have many more friends. Because people see that, you will listen to them. You respond to them. You respond to their needs and not just teach them. So that's one thing we need to do. And then when people are happy, what should we do? When people are happy about something, a little kid, very happy about something, what can we do? Pardon? Also express that happiness. Yeah, that we can say, oh, you're happy, I'm happy for you. Even little kid says, I'm happy, then we can say, oh, I'm happy with you. So when people are unhappy, and then we say, oh, I know that makes you unhappy. So get used to responding to the feeling of people. And you have many more friends. And that opened the way for evangelism. That the people around you, your neighbors, don't remember you as a preacher, but remember you as a person who knows their feeling. That way it will open up for evangelism. Now even for, uh, when we do evangelism, there are different ways of doing it. Many people do it by telling. God loves you. There is heaven. Believe in Jesus, you'll be safe. It's telling, telling. I'm not saying this is wrong, but when people are not ready, telling them doesn't make them open. Now how, what kind of evangelism would be more effective? When we listen to the needs of the people, and they say, for instance, someone says, oh, I'm painful here. I'm unhappy. My family life is unhappy. How do you want to respond to that? We can respond to the feelings. Remember this, this is the key, very important, write down. Respond to the feelings of the person. Yes. I know you feel unhappy. Yes. I know it's not easy. Oh, the sickness. It must, <coughs> make, it must make you feel painful or unhappy or burdened. So we respond to the feeling of the person. And listen. And when you say, for instance, uh, imagine someone is sick. And then you say, oh, it must be painful, it must be difficult. <clears throat> How would the person respond generally? They will open up more. They will open up more. Right, they will open up more. They will tell you more about the pain. When they tell you more about the pain, Christians have a tendency, then pray. Then you are teaching again. When they open up, open up more, what should we do? We remind them that God knew about the problem. Okay, now, I'm, what I was saying is, uh, when we start with teaching, or even at that point when we teach and tell them what God can do and care about them, to them, for a non-Christian, it's still teaching. Because they don't know God. They don't feel God's love. But when they keep talking, Oh, it's painful. We can ask them, tell me about it. How painful it is. And what did you do? Does it help? Listen to the needs, respond to the needs, respond to the feelings. So that he trusts you more. So that he feels that you care about him. And also in your heart, have feelings about his pain. Now, Someone is sick and has serious pain. 
then in your heart you say, wow, that must be painful. It must be difficult. In your heart you say, if it were me to have so much pain, it would be very difficult. So we care about this person. I know it's very painful then. It's very difficult to respond to the feelings. And then at one point, after this person knows that, we care about them. And sometimes we need to say, what, can I do something to help you? We can say something before we tell them about Jesus. Why? Because they're not ready for Jesus yet. They're ready for human care, human help, right? God's help is too far away. They don't believe in Jesus yet. So offer them human care, human help. And then at one point, you can share. Oh, I have similar pain before, and I have very special experience. In the prayer, I was healed. Or well, someone has serious problem, and they were healed. And, and you watch the response. If the person looks very interested, then he's ready. If the person says, oh, you tell me about Jesus again, <laughs> then you know that the person doesn't like you to talk about Jesus. But we might still talk about Jesus, but we want to find a better way. Yeah. If the person say, you're going to tell me about Jesus again, right? I don't believe in Jesus. Then, then we, we have to realize, we have to realize the condition of the relationship. What I mean is, when you do evangelism, sometimes you notice that some people are opposing you. Have you noticed that? Yes. And sometimes you see people who are interested. Have you noticed that? Yes. When you see people interested, that means the door is wide open. Yes. When you see people have no interest, <clears throat> you know that the door is closed. Yes. And then if we try to convince, the more we convince, what will happen? the more the resistance is, right? So we have to be aware of the dynamics of the relationship. So what can we do? If the person clearly rejects, we know that he's in a condition of rejecting, then we can find out about it. And we can say, well, it sounds like uh, when you hear about Jesus, you." You don't think he can help. Uh, you, you, you have negative feelings. Can you tell me about it? Maybe the person will say, well, I met a Christian before. He lied to me. He hurt me. Uh, so if you, you, if you respond to the uh, questioning about Jesus, the negative feeling about Jesus, when they express that they are negative about Jesus, then you want to respond to that. Instead of saying, believe in Jesus, Jesus helps you, Jesus has helped me, he will help you. Mm -hmm. Then you're trying to convince. Yeah. The more you convince, the more he will reject, yes. resist. Yes. So we want to go into, oh, I heard that you, you, uh, you feel negative about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about it? But some Christians don't like to hear about it. Because they say, he's going to say something negative. But if he doesn't talk about it, how can we help him to overcome that? Maybe he said, a Christian hurt me before. Or maybe I went to a church, I felt very uncomfortable. So he'll tell you about it. And when he tells you about it, do we try to convince? If someone is not nice to you, it's his fault. God still loves you. Does it help? Sometimes. Now, if the person has been hurt by a Christian, and then you says, well, that's just a person, but God still loves you. Does it help? Sometimes no, because he has a negative feeling. So what can we do? We can say, I'm sorry that person hurt you. I feel very bad about it. It must have hurt you so bad that makes you feel so negative 
about Jesus. I'm very sorry about that. I say sorry for that person. Now that is responding to his feelings. Or oh, he went to a church and feel uncomfortable. And you ask him, uh, how do you feel being uncomfortable? He might say, well, the people jumping in a da you know, and dance in the singing, well, that's too crazy. And then, and then a Christian say, well, because they love God, therefore they do that. What will happen? It won't relate. So we can say, yes, I know. For you, you will feel uncomfortable when you see people dancing when they're singing. You feel uncomfortable. So when people say something, we can accept. Can we accept that some people don't feel comfortable in loud music? So we understand that. Some people are uncomfortable with dancing, people yeah, dancing. Yeah. We, we, uh, we express, yes, I understand that, I know that. That way the person feels we understand them. This is very, very important. It's also important in your daily life. If you learn just now what I said, how to respond to the feeling of people, your family life would be much better. Many families have problems because in the family, there's always rejecting each other, saying negative words, trying to convince the other person, right? That's what happens in most families. But if you try to listen and say, I know it's difficult, it's uneasy, and I appreciate what you've done for me, I appreciate the good things in you, and I'm happy to see the good things in you, those things, those things we say make people feel happy, right? So, a lot of times evangelism fails because we don't communicate in a good way. We don't care. We just want the result that person was saved. We don't care about the feeling of the person. We just want to convince him you don't have to feel bad. So this is very, very important. If you start to change, now this needs practice. Uh, if we practice, it will take more time. But next week, uh, when, when the other people come, we might practice this. This is very, very important. Okay? And then when it comes to a point that we can share, uh, listen to this person and say, uh, I'm, I feel unhappy, I feel sad, things like this. And then we can share first about our similar feelings. What I mean is like this. Don't first jump to the prayer. Just say, yes, I've been hurt by people too. I've been hurt by Christians too. <laughs> to let them know that it's something real. I know that feeling. I've been hurt too. It really feels bad. And talk about just the feeling. And see how they respond to the person. And the person says, oh, you have been hurt by Christians too? And then it might cause the person to be curious. Now, but some people, no matter what you do, they will still reject you. But what I mean is, we try not to make people reject because we insist and try to convince. But we try to care, try to respond to their feelings, and then we have a better chance of helping them to see our care and really sincerely care. Don't just look for the result. Even when a person rejects Jesus, how should we respond to the person? If the person said, I don't want to tell, hear about Jesus, I don't want to, you to talk about Jesus to me anymore, how can we respond? We don't have to promise. We don't have to promise. No, I, I will never tell you about Jesus again. We don't have to promise. But we can say, oh, I know that it makes you feel unhappy now. I'm sorry that I made you feel unhappy. We can just apologize for what we said that make them unhappy. I can understand that at this point you feel negative about Jesus. So I understand the feeling. But if a person rejects Jesus, don't just say, you go to hell. You burn forever. <laughs> Is that going to help? No. It's not good. So responding to feeling, is this something easy to learn? Yeah. No. More like easier and 
Huh? It's more like it's easy on paper when you say it, but when you're on the ground, it's not an easy. It's very, very hard. Very, very difficult. Because when people are against us, a natural response is to re respond with negative feelings. It's very difficult. But then we'll say, Jesus, Lord, I do it for you. Please help me. Give me comfort. Give me peace. Yes. Even though the person rejects, that we can accept this with grace. And then, at one point, if we can do it, we can say, you know, I know how it feels when you hurt so much. I have hurt before too, or I have seen someone hurt before too. But I experienced a real miracle when I was healed. And I saw someone experience a real, a real miracle when that person was healed. Uh, and let's see how the response. If the person looked interested, then you know there is a way. If the person says, I don't believe that, that's fake. I'm <laughs> real. And then, what do you have to do? Again, respond to that. Oh, you think that is fake. Uh, what made you think that is fake? So everything they say, respond. Instead of jumping and say, this is not fake, this is real. Then you're trying to convince again. Every time you try to convince, <laughs> he's not going to change. But if you listen and respond to the person's feeling, there's a chance for us to change the person. Okay, now, can we back this up with scripture? First, in James 1.19, which I just told you before, that <coughs> quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to be angry, that's one. And the other one in Romans 12, that will rejoice with those who rejoice and cry with those who weep. Uh, now, I forgot the exact wording because I quote from the Chinese Bible, similar. So it's, I feel the feeling of a sad person. I feel the feeling of a happy person. So the, and then when we look at Jesus, Jesus does show he cared about the feelings of people. For instance, um, the woman who touched Jesus with a 12 year hemorrhage, bleeding. And the woman was afraid. Jesus asked, who touched me? And finally the woman admitted she touched Jesus. And how did Jesus respond? He said, daughter. Um, now, I, because I quote from the Chinese Bible, I forgot the English word to use. Uh, something like, uh, uh, be of peace. Uh, um, the meaning is relax, something like this. But the wording is not relax. It's just, uh, you know, be peaceful, uh, daughter, uh, be of peace, that you are uh, forgiven, that you are saved. You're saved. Your faith has saved you. So Jesus responds to her fear by saying, calling her daughter. And uh, Zacchaeus, that he responded by saying, come down, I'll go to your home to eat with you. So he cares about the person. Jesus showed that he cares about the person. And um, for instance, a woman caught in adultery. Jesus could be teaching her, but after all the people left, Jesus care about, is there anyone else to accuse her? Because at that point she was concerned and Jesus said, where are the people who are accusing you? Oh, they're gone. So Jesus did not say, are you repentant now? Do you know that you have committed a serious crime, a serious sin? But Jesus instead, talk about what she's concerned about. Where are the people who accuse you? And then, and then when the woman said, uh, they, they've gone. And then Jesus said, oh, go in peace, sin no more. That he, he does teach, but then he first care about uh, the person's feeling. 
And you can see from many times when Jesus talked to people, he talked to people and make them feel good. That when Peter said, depart from me for I'm a sinner. But then Jesus said, you know, be of peace, you from now on you'll catch people like fish. So he comfort, encouraged them. Encourage. And when Jesus, when Peter was about to deny Jesus three times, how did Jesus respond? He said, I pray for you that you will not lose your faith. And when you turn back, strengthen your brothers. Now Jesus did not say, shame on you. You follow me three years and now you deny me again. <laughs> he did not make people feel bad. He said, I pray for you. I mean, can you imagine that? <laughs> that when he was about to commit this sin, that Jesus would say, you know, I pray for you so that you will not lose your faith. So we can see that God cares about our feeling. So he said that the crush, um, I, again, uh, because I, remember, I memorized the Bible mostly in Chinese, uh, the, the crush, the, the the wheat, what do you call that? The tall wheat. He would uh, the the damaged one. He will not crushed, and the candle that's going to burn out. He will not blow out. So Jesus is like that. That he will not. When a person is very sick, he will not just say go die quickly. He won't do that. He would care about the person. So that's. What we see when Jesus saw people, he always cared about the people's needs. So if we care about people's feeling and care about their needs and then go to approach them and help them. And you notice that Jesus taught his disciples, but for the outsiders, he bring them in first. He, he loved them first, to change them first. He did not teach first. Okay, so, uh, so we can, if the person's open, we can say, well, I have experienced a similar thing, but I experienced a great miracle that God really healed me. And if you see the person's interested, then you can say, well, would you like me to pray for you? And then, and then after the prayer, you'll say, uh, would you keep your eyes closed? Have you experienced anything during the prayer? And if he says yes, and then you say, can you tell me about it? And then he says, I feel peaceful. And then you say, that's what Jesus has promised, peace I give to you. So you have experienced the peace of God so real. That is God, what God promised in the Bible, and he has brought that peace to you. Isn't that wonderful? Do you want Jesus to continue to bless you? So you use that as a way to help people. So then you need a strong anointing to build up the anointing uh, to reach out to people. So to do evangelism effectively, first we need to care about people and practice that in the church. Learn not to accuse. There are many Christians who get used to talking like this. You're a sinner. You need to repent. Kneel down. You don't repent, God will punish you. That's not going to change people. If they already are repentant, you don't need to say that. They're already repentant. If they're repentant, then you say, I see that you're repentant. It's very good that you repent. Let's come to God. Let's come to God. Me too. We'll come to God and repent of our sins. Instead of accusing the person, we say, let's come to God together and we ask God to forgive us our sins. So, to use grace and the law, the distinction of the law and the gospel is very important in evangelism and in talking to people. The law is not going to change people. Let me ask you, when people punish you, do you change? Do you become a better person? Is it because Jesus punished you, that's why you change? It's because Jesus loved, right? So people are changed by love, not by punishment. When they are changed, and then you, you can guide them to follow Jesus, not by accusing them, not by saying, you don't know what is love, you don't have love, so you need to repent and love. That way, you are using accusation as a way to help people to change. Does it work for you? No, 
so we don't want to accuse. But we want to bring people to repentance. See, when I talk with you, I, I do help you to repent. I do help you to realize sins are not good. Sins will destroy your life. And God cares about you, and I care about your life. And I don't want to see your life destroyed. And when we repent and follow God, we'll receive blessings all the days of our life. That is wonderful. And are we willing to repent to God and say, Lord, I want to turn away from my sins and now turn away from the sin of neglecting people's feelings. Are you willing to do that? Now, I'm bringing you to repentance, but I'm not accusing you. So we need to learn to use positive words. Now, if someone continues to reject God, sometimes we need to say, I'm sad to see you like this, and I don't want to see you go farther and farther away from God. We can still express the sadness. And at one point, we might have to say, you know, it's very important to turn back to God. If not, you can lose your salvation. Instead of saying, you will lose your salvation, you go to hell straight to hell. But we can say, I don't want to see you go to hell. I don't want to see you perish. I want to see you in heaven. That way you are using positive motivation to encourage people. Okay, so just now I talked about how to respond to people's feelings and build a relationship. And you use the home, because the home is a place where there is love and care. So when there are people who are willing in the home to open up to from our friends, outsiders to come and then have gathering, eating, and then singing for fun, and then uh, sharing testimony and asking if people are willing to pray. Uh, that's one way of evangelism. Or when people experience healing, tell them to spread to their friends. And you can do something like this too. For instance, if one of you experience healing, write a track about it and even say the name of the person so and so in our church had this sickness for so many years and she felt so much pain and in a prayer she was healed and make this a track then it will be a personal track and that person can give to the friends and then you too can bring to your friends and say one person in our church has experienced this healing. Now, if the person is not willing that the name is put on the track, then you just say one member of our church member has experienced this, experienced healing, and you can come too for healing. Okay? Now, what if they come? Then we want to tell them, Jesus loves you. We don't come just for healing. We come for a total healing of the whole person. If, the, if we come to God and turn away from our sins and follow God totally and live in the love of God, then our whole life will be blessed. Are you willing to follow God? So when people, when we pray for people for healing or for deliverance, I always tell them, God wants to bring a total healing to your whole life. Do you want a total healing? Not just one area. And encourage the person to continue to follow Jesus and teach them. Now that teaching we'll talk about in the next few days about how important it is to because to follow God you'll be blessed. When we don't follow God then there will be bad consequences. Mm -hmm.